Hello. Do you have jigsaw puzzles with missing pieces? Or maybe an old jigsaw puzzle sitting in a closet, one that no one will ever want to use? Well, in this series of videos, I will be creating some lovely things for my junk journals using old puzzle pieces. I hope you'll join me and make puzzle piece embellishments for your journals as well. You can actually even use them to make jewelry, like like little pins, brooches, and pendants, if you like. But for myself, I'm making these for my journals. And today I'm going to demonstrate how I make the backgrounds on my puzzle pieces. My name is Laura, and I am from the Queen of Mirth. And I'm also very grateful to be here with you today. So let's get started. Now, what I've done is I've taken some old puzzle pieces. There were actually three different ones, so the sizes vary a little bit, but you don't you can actually use all the same all the same one. It isn't going to make much difference at all to your final projects. Now, I what I've done is I've taken my puzzle pieces and I've turned them upside down, most of them. I kept these ones right side up because I love the color, I love the teal, and I thought that I would, you know, do a few on the on the shiny side. But most of them I turn over because the back of the puzzle, um, the paint will stick to it much better than it will to the front. The front is very, very shiny and glossy, and I think that the that the acrylic paint is likely to, over time, um, come off of it, flake off of the of the puzzle piece. So we don't want that. And so that I'm using the much more porous side of the puzzle piece to do my work. Now, these these ones, I'm I'm. It's actually more of an experiment, just because I like the colors. Um, and. And anything goes with junk journaling, as you know. Um, I'm really happy to be able to use up these these puzzles, old puzzles, because there are missing pieces, and nobody's ever going to want to put them together. So instead of tossing them out, because they're not even good enough to donate, I'm going to create some art. Um, and like I said, the this particular part of the, or this particular video is just dealing with the backgrounds. I'm looking at each puzzle piece as a little mini painting or a mini piece of art in itself. So let's get going. Um, I have with me an assortment of mostly metallic, but also some, some um, off, off brown. I don't know. I kind of a beigey color, pink and green, and this is rose chrome. Now these particular paints are all from Martha Stewart. And I got them at Michaels. They're not, they're not particularly expensive at all, but they're, they work really well. So I'm happy with them. Some of the cheaper paints don't have much pigment in them but Martha Stewart's are pretty good you know you know Martha so this this is iridescent pearl now I have this is just the the um, top of an old yogurt container or something and I use that as a palette to put my good paints on now these are golden paints they're the, probably the best I think they're the best you can get and they're really not cheap. This one I got 75 cents at a thrift store. Somebody was getting rid of all of his or her acrylic paints and I bought them all actually because they were 50 cents and 75 cents a tube and they're actually quite good. So they're Stevenson brand. This is another one that was 75 cents. I was so thrilled that day I scored mightily. And this is, okay, this is a copper and this is a, some kind of a gold. Um, it's called iridescent light gold. Very nice. Um, 
this is the one that I couldn't open. Yeah, I'm going to just put it away so I don't try again. And this one is ir oh, Iridescent Pearl. I have that already. Okay, so I've got three of those. Now, um, I want to use a fairly large brush because that saves time. I'm not, at this moment, painting anything intricate whatsoever on, on this, on these pieces. So, just... So, like so, and then it's better to not let them lie on this because they'll stick to it. We don't want that. Now, I'm not even changing my, I'm not even washing my brush between um, coats. I may it, later if it all gets too mucky. But right now, I just want to cover these things. I'm not going to cover all of them. I'm not going to cover the teal ones, like the colored ones. I might, do, I'll probably just do them like this. Just give them a, a bit of a coat so you can still see the color through. Now the pearlescent white, um, I'm going to use that as well. It's an awesome thing. This the pearlescent, I love pearlescent paint. It's really really nice. And this white is so versatile and useful. I use it in many different projects. Uh, let's just okay I think I'm gonna speed up the video so that you don't need you don't need to watch me cover all these pieces Okay, I have covered each puzzle piece with some paint. Um, I have a little bit of paint left over in my palette, which I am going to quickly um, use up in this particular sketchbook journal-y thing I have because I don't want to waste this paint. It's extreme. It's quite expensive. 
and I don't want to waste anything so I'm going to start a background on one of the pages of this book. This is a mixed media Strathmore um, book with 40 sheets of paper. It's I love these books actually. I've used them a lot in my work for years. Like I have I have years of these books. And often they're just to practice in or you know whatever I want to do. It's all good. So here we go. I'm just using up the the I'm using up this um paint. And it will make some kind of a background, or it will assist in making some kind of a nice background for some future work that I'll be doing, but I don't know what it'll be. I haven't even begun to thought, think of that. I just am doing this to save the paint. Clean the brush. Uh, it's important to never leave your brushes for any length of time with the brush side down in the water because the um, brush will bend and you'll ruin your paintbrush. So I always keep them sideways like that. And you know, this is this one's wet, but it's fine sideways. If I left it in the water. Even though it's easy to do that, I would eventually destroy that brush. As it is, you can keep brushes for years if you look after them. So here we go. I'm just, now what I'm doing is I'm just moving them, moving the pieces because they're, they have a little bit of acrylic paint on the bottom and that makes them stick to the paper which is something I don't really want. I just want puzzle pieces right now and I want the backs to be flat. Look at that, I missed one. It doesn't matter though. I'm going to just let it be. Just like the song. I'm going to um, just make sure that they dry and don't get don't get all. Um, see now this. I'll give you this is an example. This guy is quite stuck. Now I just have to peel him off and move him though. And so that's what I'll do with all of them. And. So now I have the backgrounds for my puzzle pieces all done and I'm quite happy with them. I've done them all in metallics, although you don't need to. You can just choose any colors you like and go for it. Um, anyway, this is part one, this is the end of part one of this video series and the next video I'll be decorating them a little bit. So take care. Thank you for watching. Please press the like button and do subscribe to my channel. It does make a big difference for me and I hope that you'll enjoy seeing my future videos. So come again and see me soon. Thank you so much. Bye.